Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, we're still trying to make progress on the Turbo Beetle. I think today we're gonna go ahead and pick back up on uh, the wiring. So I've done quite a bit of wiring already, uh, which I'll show you where I'm at. And then we'll go ahead and see if we can't uh, finish up everything that's inside the car. And then from there, we'll be able to move on and start working on uh, basically the engine bay next. Anyway, uh, come on, let's uh, get started. All right, let's catch you guys up to where I'm at on the wiring. Uh, as I mentioned, I said I've already started a lot of this stuff. Uh, working on the inside. This is one of those things that just takes a bunch of time. And uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go about skinning the cat on this. But as I mentioned before, I'm running the uh, MS3 Pro Ultimate ECU. And as you can see, I've got the ECU mounted. I've got both most of the wiring harness, the bolt harness run up to the firewall. I've got relays mounted. And overall, I'm in pretty good shape and have a good plan on what's going on here. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, component selection that I did here. So we'll start with the solid state relays. Uh, these are standard ignition RY330K uh, solid state relays. Uh, so I chose these for a few reasons. Uh, one, a lot of the Bosch style mechanical relays that you find now are basically import and I kind of question the quality of those things. So I wanted something uh, that I knew that I could get a decent quality part. Also these being solid state, if I ever so desire for things like uh, the fuel pump or methanol pump, you can actually PWM the, these solid state relays so you can control the power output uh, to the load. Next, let's talk about power and ground distribution. Uh, you can see uh, that I've got basically a ground bus bar as well as a power bus bar. Uh, these are from Fastronics, I believe is the company's name. Uh, just found them on Amazon, used them in my bus, was pretty happy with them. Uh, but there's a lot of different power distribution points and ground points for a setup like this. So it's kind of convenient to have a place where you can pull everything from sort of centrally located. Now, obviously there will be a cover over the power bus bar since that's exposed. You don't want that to be hot for a direct short, uh, but it works out pretty well. Uh, basically you got leads back through the battery, back to the battery. On uh, the power side, I'm going through this uh, disconnect switch here on the kick panel. It allows me to cut the power to everything. Uh, but this basically just goes back through, have a big 80 amp relay there, uh, circuit breaker. And that's just going to go back and tie directly to the battery for both of those things. Now for all these devices, of course, I've got kind of a weird angle here, but you can see the fuse panel uh, that's located here on the back side of the kick panel. Uh, so the power source basically comes from uh, the bus bar up to the relays and then immediately over to the fuels panel. And this allows me to fuse all the separate circuits uh, with the main bus panel being fused by the circuit breaker. And then from there, so the bottom side is the input power and the top side is the actual load. And you can see I've got some of that stuff already terminated already. Now let's talk about the harness. Uh, so the MS3 Pro, you can get it with this uh, eight foot flying lead harness, uh, which is pretty nice. Of course, I've already de-loomed. Uh, it comes with uh, split loom and shrink wrap on it. Uh, I de-loom that because of course I don't need every single wire terminated down here at these uh, base plugs. So what I've done is I've gone through uh, each of these groupings of connectors and through the documentation for the MS3 Pro, and I've pared down this harness to only what I need. So that's worked out pretty well. Let me cut a bunch of wires out of it. So I've got uh, all three connectors basically grouped up, and you can see that I've got them routed uh, to the different directions. Of course, the bulk wiring, everything that runs back up here to the firewall, which is gonna get terminated into a Deutsch style uh, 40 pin connector up there, which is what we'll be starting on here shortly. And then you can see down here, I've got distribution, essentially where power comes back um, to all the devices. Uh, you can see this is a six pin connector here that runs up uh, to the firewall connector. There was uh, exactly six extra pins uh, left open after I terminated, I will terminate everything. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and terminate everything at the firewall and this will be for any sort of future expansion i've already got the remaining six wires uh, ready to go so that's where i'm at right now um like i said i've made some progress already it's a lot of tedious work here a lot of stuff that eh, really quite frankly not a lot of fun to film or a lot of fun to watch uh, but i wanted to just kind of show you where everything's at so far give you a little taste of what's going on so today's task we're going to go ahead and try to see if we can't get that firewall connector terminated and at least wrap up the uh in car side of the wiring harness so we can get started on the engine side.
two hours later. All right, well, this has been my office here for the past couple hours, getting everything terminated. Uh, you may have saw here, I've got my uh, laptop in here. Uh, this is essentially the pinout for the bulkhead connector. Uh, you can kind of see that I've got everything listed uh, by basically where it comes from on the ECU, wire gauge, uh, source, some notes, wire color notes, and then this is a notation of the different grouping. Um, essentially because I had a lot of the wires grouped up in the, a concentric twist uh, from where they originated on the ECU. And then this was what I was making live as I went here. That's the actual termination location uh, on the bulkhead connector. And I made some adjustments of that basically to kind of get uh, the wires to sort of fit together nicely, uh, group things where it made sense on the other side when I go to break it out for the hardware. Now let's take a look at the connector itself. Uh, basically you can see uh, certainly a bundle of wires there. Uh, so if you'll notice everything's got a loop on it, uh, that's for strain relief. I'm actually going to build another support here that goes off the firewall to, to hold onto this harness. Uh, vibration is one of the biggest things that uh, kills connection issues. But then all these little individual loops, which is, occurs on every single wire in here, is just a strain relief so there's nothing pulling on any of the pins in the connector itself. I've got the boot here, which I'll slip up on the end of the connector, uh, which will conceal all the backside of the wiring there. And then as you may have saw, I put uh, some braided material, braided loom on top of this. Um, after I put some heat shrink in and kind of grouped everything up. And if you follow that down, you'll see that I've got everything sort of flattened out here. Uh, reason for that is that's actually where the back seat comes across and sits. And so I needed to flatten out the group, which is, you know, probably about an inch in diameter. I needed to make it nice and flat uh, so the seat can actually go right over the top of it. This is actually a high point that the seat sits on. So actually the seat frame will go just right over the top of this. And allow me to put the back seat back in. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up those last few things here, see if I can't go ahead and put a pin on this particular part of the project. And then we'll have another thing off the list and then we can start focusing on all the wiring on the engine bay side. All right, so that's gonna wrap up for this video. I'm glad to have that job finished. Uh, there's still a long way to go, uh, but that's definitely one big piece of the puzzle uh, to have basically checked off the project list. Anyway, if you enjoyed what you saw today, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I'm gonna try and these uh, more short format videos here, so hopefully we'll get some more regular content. Uh, trying to chip away at the list here and get this thing back on the road. As the old adage says, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Anyway, hope to see you next time. See ya.